What's up everybody? My name is Russ with RWGResearch.com. This is uh, the fourth installment of the video about the Zero Electric Motorcycle. Now the last three really were kind of the factory setup and what was going on. From here on out it's going to be what am I going to do to modify this and make it how I wish it to be. Including building a battery pack that does fit in the original case. Has a balancing system, has some safeties built into it and I'm going to go and basically show you how I'm going to do all that. There's a lot of other ideas I have, but we're just going to do one thing at a time here. And uh, the first one is, how in the world am I going to get all these 240 battery cells in this original zero electric motorcycle case? And to be quite fair, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm 98% sure because I did a lot of CAD work. I made a lot of hand drawings trying to figure out how to get these batteries inside of this uh, unit and how I'm going to make this work. Now the things we need to remember is safety, basically not killing myself or blowing up the battery or something like that. The second thing is safety with the battery voltages, keeping them in the ranges they're supposed to, not overheating them uh, when you're charging and discharging, all kinds of different things to think about here. And then the last thing is how to build this, this whole unit and then have a monitoring system so I can watch it, monitor it, and figure all that out. Now the original uh, electric motorcycle had a different cell count, right? It had uh, 14 rows. Uh, I am doing, wait, sorry, it had 12, 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 14. It had 14, okay, and this BMS that it came with are 14. Uh, set up for a different chemistry. It's a lithium iron style battery, uh, but it's a different voltage. These are lithium iron phosphates, uh, and that, that cell chemistry on the old battery is different. So I can't use this BMS to make this thing happy and work. Second thing is I'm removing the black box that the Zero came with, so we gotta figure out a way to keep these cells balanced and uh, make all that work. I am putting a uh, 16 cell unit in here. Is that 14? Yeah, 16. Two off, really. Anyway, I've been doing other things. I can't can't remember half the things I'm doing. But hey, one day at a time, one step at a time here. So I have purchased this little board. Alright, and this is a nice little board. You can see right there this is a 17 cell balancer. I'm only going to use 16 of those but um, I figured what the heck, if for some unknown reason I wanted to go one extra, you can do that. You can leave it off, it doesn't matter. The back side of this board is pretty blank. Now I bought this board because uh, I'm not 100% sure about this battery balancer, but I know for a fact that these original uh, battery balance systems that were connected to these cells originally, these are not active. Basically, to balance the cells you actually have a row of resistors and here are some transistors and some other logic to go with it and each one of these is the bank so there's only eight of them here because the original yep the original battery was this size right here and this is also one of the other original batteries so I don't want to use this because this is not an active battery balancer what does that mean? that means this basically heats up these resistors, burns off the extra energy, and balances out each cell to match each other cell in the pack. That way all the pack is equally balanced when you're charging and discharging. Now this board here, not much to it, but this board also has a bunch of MOSFETs, but it's only rated I think for 70 amps, or even less than 70 amps. Uh, sorry, this one's only rated for 40 amps, I'm thinking of something else I got. So it says right there 8S 40 amps. You can see it on there. Okay, BMS. So what this does is if it shorts out, over uh, charges, all these kind of factors, this takes care of that. Now on the new system, uh, this also did the same thing. This would cut out, do other things, take care of things. Unfortunately, this little board, all it does is balance at 1 amp. Uh, uh, sorry, 1.2 of an amp. I think you can get 1.5 out of it, but... I know from my understanding, which I haven't tested, it's 1.2. Great, fine and dandy. The next thing is how do we measure, okay that takes care of the balancing part, but how do we measure each cell external from this balancer 
and watch each cell because if you have a whole battery pack and I have 14 of these packs sorry eight uh, 16 of these packs in series I need to make sure that one of them isn't dropping faster than the other and if it is either a try to balance out the pack or B make sure that this thing actually uh, doesn't discharge too far and ruin my single uh, row of batteries right in the uh, parallel connection also I forgot this is an active battery balancer so what it does is it transfers energy from one set of batteries to another that's why I wanted to go with this little guy instead of this big guy I don't know what this is if it's active or not I doubt it uh, but it might be and then this guy is not active it just burns off the energy so that's what's important about this board is it's an active battery balancer so how do we measure each cell battery uh, and then monitor that well there are dedicated integrated circuits for that I looked up a couple versions and uh, the particular chip I found was about 25 bucks this by itself I think was about 33 bucks 32 bucks which is fairly decent uh, if you look around at stuff like this and the chip being 25 bucks, all it does is it monitors each one of the cells. You have to have a whole bunch of extra circuitry to make it do a bunch of other stuff. Then you got to build a board. You got to do a whole bunch of just extra stuff. It's a lot of work. Build your own system to monitor all that and program all that. It's a lot. So what I decided to do is I looked a little bit harder and I found a another unit that I believe is an active balancer. If not, I'm still going to use this one. But what the other unit does is it does monitor each voltage. I believe it's even got temperature on it. It's got low voltage cutoff, high voltage cutoff. You can set for each cell. It's all programmed. And believe it or not, it was the same price as this. Now what's cool about it is it, I don't have it yet. It comes in a box that you mount to the battery. Then you put in a, a serial connector port, just a phone cord is what it is. It's an RG, is that a 45 jack? Uh, and then 25. 35 anyway the small four pin jack you plug it in then it's got a remote operating thingamabobber that you can put on whatever you want where you can monitor it external from the battery and then you can change all your settings and play with everything so I thought you know what instead of doing a bunch of custom programming and spending a year trying to get all that working I'll just try to find something off the shelf and see uh, how good it is or how terrible it is but it doesn't have some things I'd like, like speed and monitoring other things. It does have current, I believe, charge and discharge. You can do so much. When I get it, I'll show you. It is from China, and it's going to take a month to get here. This one was the same. So this is a slow process. So what I'm going to do is bring you a little closer, show you what I'm working with, and then I'm going to run a time lapse of me starting the process of trying to cut these batteries, uh, the nickel strips, cut the nickel strips, I bought a roll of nickel strip. This is a 10 meter roll. It is 0.2 millimeter thick by 10 millimeter wide. Um, I couldn't find any strips big enough, so I'm going to double up on the strips of this same thickness, but I'm going to double up the width to get uh, a high current capability out of this. Um, so I'll be actually cutting these, re bending them, and getting them all right. What I've learned is this is what these cells originally look like out of their pack. They're uh, 25 volt replacement style packs. Um, and basically, yeah, it's an eight cell. Sorry, eight to uh, hit myself in the face. It's an eight, uh, eight S battery, which means there's eight in series. And there are 25, 25, no, 15 of each battery in that series of batteries, right? So this comes together, it's got fiberglass on it, it's got really nice uh, good paperboard, fiberglass paperboard, and when you take it all apart it looks like this. They've just literally folded this battery up to make it fit, which is nice. It just so happens that this battery literally fits exactly. I mean, it is a perfect fit, right like that. Which means I got half my pack constructed and I don't have to do anything about trying to make that happen. So, if you take this pack, you put it about here, 
this whole thing fits perfectly inside here. It's literally a perfect fit. And I have just enough room to put one more row of cells sideways down here, which I'm going to need to do. So, I'm going to actually take uh, these, cut them, cut the nickel strips, which gives me the exact length I need. I can fit two more, right, and have my extra space on my end. So I'm going to cut two, fold them, nickel strips, fold them, nickel strips, fold them. Then I have to take these and actually make two strips going down the side. You'll see when I build it. So, what I'm telling you is, is there's a lot of work to be had uh, just putting the batteries together. There's a bunch of, I don't know what this is, sticky stuff on here, and I'm going to have to take some chemicals and uh, clean that off. That's from uh, taking that original pack apart, so that when I go nickel stripping, tack welding my uh, stuff together, it'll actually hold. So, that's a lot of talking, a lot of yakking, but really most importantly is monitoring each set of batteries that are in the series chain of batteries so that none of them get below a certain point. The other thing is, is these are packed in here really tight. I imagine they're going to get warm. So I'm going to put temperature monitoring on here. The original factory just glued these batteries together. That's how they put these together. And it's just hot glue. So I need to kind of be careful with what temperature that glue is going to melt because that is actually holding everything together. Of course, I'll probably put some tape around this to hold it together. I do have the original fiberglass pieces I took out of here. I'll be adding those in between all this stuff. Lots, lots of to do. But then I got to put all my BMS cables in there and get them routed through here nicely. And yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. So I'll probably have another video where I actually start constructing that whole thing. This video is just wanting to talk to you about my goals and what's important, which is monitoring the battery, the temperature, each cell count, and shutting the system down if it gets too out of balance. What happens is when one of the cells in series is lower voltage than another cell, it drains faster and it will go below and what's weird is, let's pretend like one bank is pretty darn low and the other banks are pretty darn high. You will still appear on the voltage of the entire battery. It will appear as if you have the correct battery voltage. But in reality, all but one row or one set of series batteries is low and the other ones are high. And you'll just kill that one row and then the whole battery is shot. When I get this put together, I do not want to have to take this apart. Now... Another thing is, is when the battery manufacturers put these batteries together, usually, they actually take measurements of internal resistance and they pair up batteries with the same internal resistance and they build the whole pack out of that so that everything charges and discharges equally. Now, luckily for me, these two battery packs are manufactured at the same time, actually one right after another, so I'm hoping that these will be really, really close to the same and I'm keeping the same pack in all the cells in series. I'm just going to cut the strips and position them differently. But they're going to be hanging out with their brother fellows. Uh, and they're going to hopefully be a good balanced battery pack. That's my goal. So, yeah. The next video will probably be me cutting this thing up with time lapse. I have cut one of these similarly apart. It really is time consuming, it kind of sucks. And it's really hard to get these apart without ripping everything just to shreds because I'm going to use these pre stamped, pre made battery pack assemblies to make this work. So I think I'm going to cut the video here. That's probably long enough for this video. We'll see you on the next one. Let me know down, let me do, let me know down in the comments uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, thoughts, uh, something I didn't mention that I should be thinking about. Um, I will be putting, these don't have this, and they're not protected here from my understanding, but I'm going to be putting fuses in each one of the rows, going to each one of the cells in case something does get shorted out. We won't have to worry about blowing something up internally. Um, so safeties like that will have to be put in place still. And uh, yeah, lots and lots of work. So let me know down in the comments if you either know a, battery, a better balance BMS system. Some of these battery balance systems that are internally protected. I'm going to just put a fuse on there like they had originally. 
Some of these that you have to run current through a bunch of MOSFETs are super expensive. You can easily spend three or four hundred dollars on just the battery uh, monitoring and balancing system. Uh, if I use this, I've spent thirty bucks, thirty-two bucks, and if I use the other controller, uh, shipped straight from China, which is crazy for free, which takes a month if you pick that option, it's only thirty-three bucks for that whole system. So that beats a three hundred dollar value as long as it's good, does its job, and it's. Uh, acceptable for what I need it to do. So anyway, let me know down in the comments though. I want to know your opinions and thoughts and we'll see you on the next one. Read the Bible more. I'll talk to you later. Woo! That was a lot of yakking. I need a drink. Peace.